It really is. Yeah. Because all you did was use your imagination and create through 3D printing something that I could use or you could use, you know, contractors can use, and even regular homeowners can use. That's about 60 to 70 percent of my industry is guys walking in saying, I have an idea, but I can't make it. Can you make it? So we help them make it, we help them design the, the blueprints for it, we help them get through the patent process, and we also help them get into manufacturing. If they want us to manufacture certain things, we'll manufacture it. Other things, they'll go get injection molded. So, uh, <clears throat> but we're doing that constantly with companies that almost everybody in the industry uses something long enough and says they shouldn't have made it this way, it should have been this way. So they come into us, we make it that way, right? Well, most tool companies know, go to the contractor and ask them, ask them questions because they'll tell you, hey, you should change this. This was great. This was, mm -hmm. I didn't like this. Yeah. And they'll, they'll adapt to that. Yeah. You help with patents also? Yes, we do. Yeah. We actually, what we do is we write out the drawings and the papers and we put them in contact with the company that I refer. I've dealt with lots of patent companies and a lot of them, they have the monopoly, so they, they don't really answer all the time once you once they got the first payment so I have a company I deal with for years and he's great and he's super fast so I have referred everybody through to him and I do the drawings because you still got to produce drawings of what you did if you're gonna patent it. exactly so you may know how, what you want the product to be but you may not draw a stick man you know what I mean so we do that I knew very little about 3d printing I'd seen you know the extrusions making walls and we talked about that as well and, and so when I started looking at the applications of course, we've all seen the 3D printed toys, and they're fun and, and, and those sorts of elements, but when I started seeing the capabilities for large-scale 3D printing, and then started to discover about 3D scanners and 3D printers, now it opened up a whole world of opportunity for industries to potentially solve their own problems on sites. For instance, let's say, um, let's say we had an HVAC fitting that had cracked and it was a very particular fitting from overseas and it was very expensive to replace or or domestically um, I, see, I see what your reaction yes. there but let's say it's let's say it just it's going to take weeks to get or they have to produce it or it's very costly well now we have the capability in our industry and I guess almost any industry to take that fitting scan it have someone model it send the scan data off-site to a printer like Randy's and he can like he did with the the part for the tractor produce that fitting for me and I can send someone drive across town grab that fitting be back on the job site that day I have a very expensive trade on site that wants to finish up and be done by the end of the day well now maybe they can be whereas alternately I could be waiting uh, a, a lengthy amount of time for that piece or spending an exorbitant amount of money replacing that part. So now it gives us an opportunity to think outside the box. And honestly, the more I think about it, there's just unlimited um, applications for this in, in new home construction, renovation, um, and, and other, by extension, other industries. Well, right away, my mind goes in that direction. If we can fabricate anything that we need, like if, how much is a 3D printer? Uh, they can range anywhere from a few hundred dollars to four or five hundred thousand dollars. It really depends on the printer and what you're looking at producing from it. We've developed our, we put our own in-house printer that we modify a printer and put our own extrusion and we set up schools and universities. Uh, you can't patent a printer because it's been out so long. It's been out since the early 70s, but the patents ran out. That's why now it's becoming rampant, but they didn't introduce it in the 70s. They shut it down. It was too early to let the technology out. So now it's open sourced and everybody, so they're, they're actually patenting the lipstick, the add-ons. It's kind of like your car having a camshaft sensor. You'll replace that sensor five or six times, but never the camshaft. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's all the lipstick that goes wrong with these printers. So we build a workhorse of a printer that doesn't have all the lipstick. It just does the job. So you Hence went you, that stuff. You went from using scanners and printers to building your own printers. We built North America's biggest 3D printer. Yeah, that's you what, did. Yeah. 
And you, and this is what you made the trailer out of. Yeah. So just for a moment, because I find this hilarious, but it's really entertaining at this point. A 3D trailer, like Camper. Yeah. Okay, and, and how much of this did you build? Uh, we printed the uh, floor, walls, ceiling, dinette seats, kitchen and closet walls, all as a single piece. In one mold? One, one It's piece. not a mold? Not a mold. It's layers uh, stacked on top of each other, just like house printing that you saw. It's the same concept, and it goes around and around and around. Like, we live-streamed it on YouTube for nine and a half days. We developed our own extruder. Um, industry likes to complicate things. I like to simplify it. <clears throat> so with our extruder, when you put it up against competitors, you have, you know, like big corporations. One company has an extruder that's 37 and a half kgs is the weight of the extruder, and that's what melts the plastic and puts it and lays it down. Uh, NASA has another massive extruder, like 400 pounds or so, uh, and theirs compared to mine, mine weighs three and a half pounds and fits in the palm of your hand and outperforms both of them. And that's just because it's, we've simplified it and found out a certain trick that we do that really simplifies the whole 3D printing process and allows us to merge almost any material together. So he shows me this, <laughs> right? Right away, I know what it is. This is for two DeWalt batteries. One dead battery goes in, one positive go back, and just click, pull it off, and you bring that one battery back to life, probably 90% chance, yep. and then you put it back in your charger. As soon as I saw it, I went, you made this? Mm -hmm. He made this. Does that excite you? Because <laughs> I want one. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's not just that. Right away, I'm going, holy cow, we can put and make anything. Yeah. That's right. And especially in our world of construction, we have the opportunity to go, I need a part. We're going to be working a lot more together, <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Nice. What is this? That's our mag mount. So you basically snap it on, you peel off the adhesive, you snap it onto the bottom of your DeWalt battery. You can take even an impact DeWalt, which is super heavy, and go up in the rafters. You can clip it onto the side of a rafter, put it on the side of your scissor lift. It's got to be metal. Uh, anything that's magnetic. Yeah. Okay, so that's it'll steel. stick to it. Hold your tool. Yep. And then you just grab it when you need to use it. And then and we once put, you bond that to your battery, it's pretty much there for a long time? It's on there. We didn't make it where, you know, if it's a guy saying, I want to use it on all my batteries, well, it's not going to work because I want safety first. I don't want you putting it up there and all of a sudden you're popping it on and off a dozen times and it's not snapping on the same way. So we say one battery per mag mount. Uh, and also for the auto sector, it's a rubber coated battery as well. So it doesn't scratch the paint of the car if you stick it on the side. And this was you. Nobody came to you and said, you no. know, this was just your brain. Yeah. <laughs> and what is this? Uh, that one there is, I've used DeWalt's for years for boosting old, uh, boosting trucks on uh, construction sites when a car stops. So you'd put a DeWalt battery yeah. That attaches to the battery of the vehicle, yeah. and it would help start it. It'll start your car. You can with one five amp battery. I've started three trucks and one car on a minus forty day. A five amp battery. Yeah. So I, want I, buy, too. I buy these big things yeah, and the cables, and I yeah. got to carry it over. It's only like seventy five pounds. I carry it over, attach it, yeah. and most of the time it won't start the freaking thing. It's, no. It drives me crazy. It'll even do a diesel. <laughs> I had a customer. I said I didn't well, know, and he called and said it did. How many people in this day and age know how to boost their own vehicle anymore? <laughs> most, most don't. Right. They don't know where the battery but is. But that, mm. it, with a, a small instruction booklet, mm -hmm. anyone can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what I love about that. I mean, I would have some of those for some of my family members and to keep them in their vehicles. Keep that in your glove compartment. Why not? Mm -hmm. Or something similar yeah. to it, right? Why not? It's, it's genius. Okay, Love so it. this is just, you know, this is just this much of <laughs> this. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Because all you did was use your imagination and create through 3D printing something that I could use or you could use and the contractors can use and even regular homeowners can use. That's about 60 to 70% of my industry is guys walking in saying, I have an idea, but I can't make it. Can you make it? So we help them make it, we help them design the, the blueprints for it, we help them get through the patent process, and we also help them get into manufacturing. If they want us to manufacture certain things, we'll manufacture it. Other things, they'll go get injection molded. 
So, uh, <clears throat> but we're doing that constantly with companies that almost everybody in the industry uses something long enough and says they shouldn't have made it this way, it should have been this way. So they come into us, we make it that way.